Hello, everyone. I'm here again with Larry Tung, who is the PM for Sharing and Record Access. And we're going to focus today on, I think, a really interesting topic, which is faster account sharing recalculation. So, Larry, why don't we dive right into it? What do folks need to know about this new feature? First, let's set the stage. What does it mean for account sharing recalculation? And it happens as you're adjusting account sharing rules, changing the account owner, perhaps you're switching the organization wide default to private. Perhaps you're adjusting the group membership for a public group, or you need to adjust the role hierarchy. This specific role needs to now have a different parent role. And finally, if you change the account owner's role, all of these, they, it, causes sharing recalculations to happen. It and kicks it off, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's right. And so it kicks off that operation, but the changes that you're talking about, they don't necessarily, they're not affecting all records or all share entries, right? We're focused on implicit sharing with this new faster sharing recalculation. Yeah. So we're focused on what we call child implicit is kind of child implicit. interesting or a child implicit. And so let's look at that. I think we, okay, we have uh, something on the screen to show what that means. Right. So as an administrator, you already configured your roles. And so this is an example. If your organization wide default is set to private, then your contact access, your opportunity access, your case access, all of that is adjustable from the role. So what this is saying is that if you have access to an account, this specific account owner, what should their access be? And here we're saying, well, if you have access to the account and you don't own the contact opportunity or case, you get edit access. Or it says regardless of who owns the record, right? So that we're granting that access to the account owner. And you'll see these similar options on other pages as well. So when you're configuring a sharing rule, you also have this set of operations that you can choose from. And what these then do is whether you're uh, the account owner role, the, um, the sharing role on account, account team, or even granting a manual share, you have these ac uh, options to say, well, you have access to the account. What should the access be to the related contacts, opportunity, or cases? And under the hood, what's happening, right, is when you make these choices to open up sharing to the mm -hmm. for child records, mm -hmm. there are entries that get created in the corresponding child record share tables. Is that correct? Yeah. So maybe you've read that record access under the hood PDF or yep. documentation. There's a lot of details in that one. It's um, yeah, you got to be fully awake. And <laughs> it's it, like it's a really cool doc. It, it explains a lot of the stuff that goes under the hood. And ideally, you don't even need to know about that. But if you are interested in all how all of that work, when you think about granting access today, we compute a lot of the access. So your uh, sharing rules, for example, we pre-compute. As you create the sharing rule, we decide who has access. And that information is stored in tables. So the account share, contact share, case share, opportunity share. And so this implicit child feature that's built in for accounts and the related case contact and opportunity, what happens here is instead of storing these implicit child shares for case opportunity and, and contact, we we know all of that access because that's also already in the account share. Got it. And so that's the key thing. Um, Salesforce will figure it out when, let's say, um, a user needs to evaluate a, a case, for example, then we know because we know the account, we know the access on that account. And so we can figure it out. So let's so look, I, let's look at an example. Cause I think some, maybe okay. some architects following along are like totally yeah. up to speed. Yeah, we, let's look at a real example that we've prepared to see how this is changing. So let's take a look. Let's, this is a simplified example. And let's say Sally owns the Acme account. And on the Acme account, there are 5,000 contacts, 1,000 cases, and 200 opportunities. And so earlier, we we're talking about how you as an administrator or your you know, colleague as an admin has configured a bunch of these things. So Sally as the account owner, her role grants her implicit child shares. So she has 5,000 contact shares, uh, 1,000 case shares, and 200 opportunity shares. And these are all with the row cause equal to implicit child. And similarly, we'll assume 
there's access granted for roles above. So let's just say for the role hierarchy, we have implicit children there too. And then account sharing rule. Let's say you have one account sharing rule that happens to grant eight people access, right? Let's, let's pick a small number. So let's take the numbers we have. We multiply the, that by eight. And so you have that row. And then let's assume one manual share has been assigned. So someone else needs access. And, and so now you have this related access. So in this scenario, we granted the most permissive, right? Let's say we right. gave either read or read edit for all contact case and opportunity because the org-wide default for contact case and opportunity was set to either read-only or private. So that's all the stuff we do behind the scenes with some small numbers. And you can imagine if you're sharing world granted access to not eight users, but 800 users, right. these numbers start growing very because fast. Because this is already 40,000. And this is for architects watching, like having only eight sharing rules on the account is probably like, yeah, it's yeah, super Yeah, one small. sharing rule with eight people. Yeah, but yeah, you multiply that, mm -hmm. it's starting to grow, right? So so you, you you naturally ask, so what happens next, right? And so when we turn on enable faster account sharing recalc, uh, what happens is in spring 23, contact share and case share now drop down to zero. We, again, dynamically determine someone's trying to access a given contact and they don't own that contact. And it, how does the implicit child stuff work? Well, we can calculate that on the fly. Um, same with case share. And then opportunity share, that's that's still in development. And we expect forward-looking statement, winter 24 will have that feature so that customers can enable it. And that too will drop down to zero. So Got zero it. implicit children. So mm -hmm. just to, yeah, like emphasize the fact of how this is working under the hood. So today, these attributes of contact, if there is, should be access to the child mm -hmm. contact or child case or child opportunity, that is being stored at the account level today, but we are querying because there's sort of like a, there's a extra entry, right? We're storing it on the, in the account share table, but also on the contact share, case share, opportunity share, like you're showing. And so in the future, we're just going to store everything on the account share table and the system will query at runtime whether or not you should have access to those child records based on what is stored in the account share table. Did I get that right? I, I like your summary. I mean, okay. <laughs> the account share has access to all of the accounts and the related records. So we kind of have that information. We can then figure out, to your point, what about the related contact case and opportunity? And so today we have some customers who have a lot of contact shares and case shares, which means yeah. when their admin changes something, oh man, they're waiting. They're waiting. Right. Yeah. So maybe right. we should... Take a look at that. Yeah, let's look um, at the benefits. Like what, what's this yeah, going to look so like? In our own performance team did some evaluation and we saw perhaps a 3x improvement. And I think for some customers, we saw 2x improvement. And ultimately, it depends on the record volumes you have and how you've configured your Salesforce org. So that's where it's kind of like, oh, you know, depending on how your org shape is, your record volume, your performance will be different. And it's interesting. So our... Uh, Salesforce IT team, they told me, well, let's let's run a test, right? So we create an account sharing rule before the feature is on. And they told me 15 minutes. I was like, wow, wow that is, we're not blazing fast. Um, anyway, so <laughs> they can take a break, they can exercise or something. And then they said, okay, well, what happens once you turn the feature on? And when you turn the feature on, we're no longer, you know, doing all of these computations and writing the implicit child shares to the database. And they told me it took them three minutes. So I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, still take some time. We have a lot of records in right. our Salesforce org and there's a lot to compute, but three minutes is pretty good compared to 15. Yeah. So hopefully you don't take 15 minutes when your <laughs> admin is changing things, but we really hope that you'll see a, a pretty good boost from this. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a, a a lot of time, right? That's back for you to continue to do your business as usual. Usual. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's great. So this is what folks can expect when they turn it on. But what are some considerations? Maybe for, again, from an architect perspective, mm -hmm. we want to turn this on. What are other things do we need? Uh, declaratively, I'm assuming there's nothing that we would need to do because... Salesforce is sort of handling that mm -hmm. under the hood. But mm -hmm. if there's customizations that we've introduced for, for Apex mm -hmm. and maybe we were querying 
those oh, child tables? Of like, course. Yeah. What what sort of things, anything else like that, that we would need to think about before turning yeah. on this feature? So you got it <laughs> before. If, okay. So uh, depending on who you talk to, um, some customers don't even query the share tables, but some do. And if you happen to be looking at the row cause with implicit child, um, that's going to now return zero, right? So right. Um, yeah, that's the, the key caveat. If you need to know access, you can use the user record access. There's a API for that. And you can then say for this specific case or this specific contact, what's the access rather than checking the share table. Got it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So we should, I'm assuming like anything, we should test this in a sandbox and then uncover any of those unexpected uh, gotchas. Yeah, so full copy sandbox, ideally, if you don't have a full copy, then partial copy. And yeah, I mean, the whole process today really is contact support. Support will um, let my engineering team know. We will, uh, you know, turn this feature on. And then what that does is deletes the case share and contact shares where the row causes is implicit child. And then like we've been talking, there's that dynamic access when your end user tries to access a record. And um, you might be wondering, well, what about the performance for the end user? Now you're dynamically right. determined things. And um, in some cases, it actually runs faster. It really depends. Did you have a lot of parent, um, parent child like data skew? Uh, the other piece is... Um, if you're doing case merge, I mean, not case merge, account merge, right? You have all accounts. And when you merge them, then that will be faster. But the focus of this feature is really about the sharing recalculation. So that's why we've been talking about that. And then you said, hey, where's the gotchas? Well, there might be a really rare case. And you might argue we've actually made things better. Uh, that is if a high volume portal user and the next question is like, what's a high volume portal user? Uh, it's a user with a customer community license or equivalent portal license. Uh, these users cannot be assigned roles and they're typically used in a B2C use case. Yep. If one of these users happens to own a case or contacts, we, we've actually changed some of how the visibility works in a good way. And we've documented that in a knowledge article. Uh, but I really think most customers don't. Uh, it's like 1% or less that you might even hit this situation. Awesome. But there's the documentation all there and we can link to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so everyone has it. And um, I think overall, this sounds like a really interesting advancement in how we're doing sharing and um, something that definitely, you know, folks should test out, take advantage of and be aware of uh, so that uh, they don't run into those cases where they're having to wait for 15 minutes or really longer, right? In a real scenario. Yeah, yeah. To, um... I think that's really an extreme case just to be... Yeah. People watching, I mean, our org is just really, really big and has tons of volume. So I really, well, if it takes 15 minutes, yeah, let me know. I mean, you're probably in the, you know, upper echelon of data record volume. But I guess there's one more thing. I think customers ask me, you know, we're changing things and sharing. And uh, let's say I changed the org wide default. And here I'm using this org, Maria, she sees the OWD change being made. And the question was, well, how do I track the progress? And I realized you know what, we we don't always tell you like, hey, well, you can just check the background jobs page. So that was right. just one call out. When you're doing some of this testing, perhaps it, you, you're in a scenario where you're similar to Salesforce's IT team and you're like, hey, I kicked this process off um, five minutes ago, didn't finish yet. And I, I wanna know the percent complete. And this is where you'll see this. And that implicit child maintenance that we talked about, uh, unfortunately, we never actually stuck this in the background job. It was just a job that ran oh, uh -huh. and there was no status. So that's another benefit. Like now we're just not even dealing with implicit child maintenance once you turn this on for contact and case. And like I said, opportunity is coming hopefully uh, by winter 24 safe harbor forward looking statements. But yeah, I'm really yeah. excited for people to try this out. That looks awesome. More transparency. And one final quick question. So mm -hmm. you, it's coming mm -hmm. for contact and case. Do you, uh, customers have to turn it on for both objects at once or can they choose one or the other? Um, you could just turn it on for one. We don't really recommend because, I mean, it's just another thing to think about. And right. our end goal is to turn this on for all customers. So it's just a matter of time. So if you turn one on, you can. Um, our support will let us know, hey, we just want one. Um, fine. That's okay. But you with recommend me. 
going, but yeah, going I just on. feel like, well, <laughs> you're gonna have to either you're gonna turn it on or we're gonna turn it on for you. <laughs> Might as well try both. There's no harm in doing both. So um you, you get better per performance too. So why not? Right. Yeah. So. Why not test it, try it out, see if you like it, and give your feedback, right? Uh, mm -hmm. as we're the team continues to develop it. So right. We're generally available. So this is like we're we're double thumbs up. We think this is a go and soon, hopefully sooner than later, we're, we're thinking of turning it on everywhere. So awesome. Might as well let you know now. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time, Larry. I think this is a really exciting feature. So glad we could dive deeper and uh, let folks know what they can expect with this awesome advancement. So thanks so much. And uh, we'll see you all soon.